So we've long had a wall when it comes to AI video generation length. In the earliest days, it was a whopping three seconds, but you know, it wasn't too long before that was up to five seconds and now to our current threshold of about eight to 10 seconds. Now that is not to say that we haven't developed some tricks along the way, everything from extend features to the old last frame, first frame trick, which oddly has been showcased on the channel in the last couple of videos. But in terms of actual native one shot long video generation, well, that has been a problem until now. And this isn't a hypothetical research white paper. You can use this right now for free. And most of you will be able to run it on the hardware you already have. And even if you're lacking there, I've still got a method for you to take it out for a spin. All right, commencing countdown. So to say that the 10 second AI video generation wall has been broken is a bit of an understatement because frame pack has arrived and it's pretty fascinating. We're going to dive into how it works in just a minute because I mean, it is dare I say game changing, but the important part here is that you can generate video up to one minute and well beyond and it's open source will pretty much run on consumer hardware and is compatible with video generators like Juan, Hunyan and more. Now, are there limitations? Well, yeah, of course there are, but this thing is only like a week old and we've already started to see some improvements made on it because it's open source. We'll check those out in just a bit. But first, let's talk about what makes frame pack tick. Now, one of the biggest issues that frame pack solves is the drifting and forgetfulness that we often see in next frame prediction video models. In general, as time goes on, video models tend to think less of last frames or at least consider them less important. And that's how you end up getting a lot of that decoherence and blurring that we you know, often see. Obviously, there are times that this can be super fun or, you know, at least unintentionally or maybe even intentionally hilarious. But for the most part, this is not what we're usually looking for. FramePack approaches AI video by asking a few fundamental questions that almost like seem Zen-like. Uh, for example, what if the importance of frames does not follow this simple pattern of looking at the last frame and then generating the next? I'm not gonna lie, there's definitely some math in the paper and you know charts that I, you know I kind of have a basic understanding of, but really what it comes down to are two things, uh, namely anti-drifting sampling and inverted anti-drifting, which yes, does sound like the name of a banger Radiohead album. The way this works, interestingly, is that the model ends up generating the first and the last frame of an output and then works together like bi-directionally in order to generate the output leading to you know more coherence. Yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. So now that we know how it works, how do we get it up and running? Now, the really great thing is that FramePack will work on you know pretty consumer grade hardware. Uh, requirements are NVIDIA GPUs in the 30, 40, and 50 series, and uh, at least six gigabytes of GPU memory. Uh, they even call it out here. Yes, six gigabytes, not a typo. Laptop GPUs are okay. Now, probably the easiest way to get this up and running is to utilize Pinocchio. I have covered Pinocchio a number of times on the channel in the past. Uh, it is a community driven project that allows for installation of open source software, uh, you know, very simplified. I'm not going to call it like one click, uh, you know, installs, but it's pretty close to it. Now, I do want to note two things. For one, this is obviously for NVIDIA cards only. Don't worry, you know, Mac people or I guess Chromebook people even. Uh, I've got something coming up for you in just a minute. The other thing about installing it via Pinocchio is that it comes in at a whopping 48 gigs. So you're definitely going to want to clean out your downloads folder. Uh, that said, the reason that it is coming in so large is that it includes the Hunyan video model. And of course, if it's your first time visiting Pinocchio, you will probably end up going on a bit of a downloading frenzy. Uh, Juan 2.1 is available here. Uh, the new Uno is available here as well. Uh, Hunyan, which actually you will already have via frame pack. Uh, and you can even download Comfy UI if you want to. Pinocchio is definitely a bit of a gold mine, but again, what if you are on a Mac and don't have an Nvidia card? Well, for that, what we can do is head over to Hugging Face and uh, duplicate a space. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So if we come up to spaces here and then head over to the video generation tab here, uh, you'll notice that there's you know a number of video models running here. I have been utilizing this one. Uh, I'll have a link to this down below. 
Now I should note, this is not gonna work like right out of the box. What you'll need to do is come up to uh, this button up here and hit duplicate this space. You can obviously name it whatever you want. I would suggest setting the visibility to private. Uh, and then for the space hardware, uh, to be honest, I would suggest uh, running it with the uh, NVIDIA One X L4, which actually does run you 80 cents an hour. Sorry, I, you know, there's nothing I can do about that part. You are renting a GPU. If you do happen to run into any errors in the installation, uh, you can always go up to settings and swap out the GPU that you're renting. I actually currently have it on uh, this NVIDIA One XL 405 uh, that is actually running me $1.80 an hour. Um, that is one thing that you, know, you can sort of juggle around with too is speed of generation uh, versus you know rental by the hour. The other thing that I would recommend doing in settings is just to make sure that the sleep time settings is set to, uh, you know, I have it set to one hour. Uh, you can set it to, you know, any sort of amount of time that you need just to make sure that you're not getting charged for times that you're renting the GPU and not using it. Now, once you have everything up and running, I got to admit, it's actually, you know, really easy to use. Um, so we just upload an image here. Um, you'll have the option to use T-Cache. Um, I would recommend trying it first with T-Cache on. And then uh, as they note, if you start running into kind of like blurry hand issues, um, you know, try turning it off. It will take a little bit longer with T-Cache turned off, uh, but you'll, you know, you'll obviously get better hand coherence, I guess, uh, or less blurriness. Um, total video length goes all the way up to a whopping 120 seconds. Um, they do note, keep the prompts, you know, fairly clear, but simple. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to put atmospheric shot of a beach boardwalk at sunset, calm, a few people walking around. We'll give that actually, I just as a test, we're going to go kind of low on this one. Uh, I'm going to give this, uh, well, you know what, I'll take it above the 10 second mark. So we'll do 11 seconds, let's just say. Um, they do recommend not changing steps. Um, and then I haven't actually messed around with the CFG scale too much here. Um, it's actually, you're pretty much done. So just hit start generation. Now, very interestingly, what you end up seeing here uh, are the next latents. Um, um, so it's essentially already taking a look at where it should be headed. Um, now, if you are running this locally, you will probably end up with preview frames in the finished frame section. For some reason, uh, on the Spaces version, it is not doing that. So we kind of do have to wait to see what we'll get. Uh, one trick with this that I've been doing is running shorter generations of maybe like three or four seconds just to see how the model's doing. And then I will run a longer generation. And after a few moments, we have our generation. Now, is it the greatest video generation of all time? No, it's really not. But the important thing to remember here is that this is an 11 second shot, something that, you know, essentially we have not seen to this point. We will, of course, go over some of the limitations and interesting things that I ended up finding. Uh, but first, I did want to show you, well, I mean, some fun experiments that I pulled. Uh, this is a 30 second generation of sand running through an hourglass. The prompt here was a woman holding a uh, an hourglass, sand pours through it. Uh, she acts charmingly. Now, she is a little bit on the inert side through the generation. We're around 15 seconds right now, but she does start kind of picking up towards the back end of the generation. Um, so yeah, one use case for this model is to use it as a timer. Um, we're not even at the full 30 seconds yet. I think we're coming up to just the end of it now. Admittedly, the sand is a little bit inconsistent uh, as you know you kind of scrub through the generation here. But I think the important parts here is that you know a the camera doesn't wander off. B the character remains consistently the character. Um, the sand, yeah, it might have some trouble with another longer generation here. A noir detective talking on the phone. I want to say this shot's around. 45 seconds. I will admit it's a little bit on the uh, inert side, I guess, in terms of atmosphere in the background. Um, but, you know, again, I, I didn't really prompt too heavily here other than to have him talking on the phone. Um, yeah, solid. I did also create the standard AI video test of 916 image of a girl dancing, uh, you know, very TikTok orientated, obviously. Um, you know, it's funny because the, I didn't even notice until after I did it, but there actually is decoherence here uh, with her leg kind of going through her thigh. Uh, that said, the model seemed to do fine uh, with it. So running this, 
we do end up with a full 30 seconds of dancing. Now, this is the thing that I was talking about with the tea cache. If you notice, her fingers are just kind of blurring just a little bit. There was also another problem that came in around the 15 second mark uh, where, yeah, that spin right there. That is one hiccup and the model does recover and the rest of the generation runs fine. But yeah, we do have that moment of, uh, I don't know, like dancing girl goes exorcist. So on the T-Cache side, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, this was a kind of a random image that I ended up running. He's doing random movements, uh, but you notice that the hands are definitely doing a lot of blurring here. Um, so I took the same output, same prompt, and ran it again with T-Cache turned off. And we did end up with this, where the hands definitely do look a lot less blurry and much more stable. So, uh, you know, depending on what you're aiming for, you might, you might need to turn T-Cache off. Now, one problem I did run into with the model was actually with a tracking shot. Um, so I ended up taking you know, our cyberpunk woman with long white hair walking down a cyberpunk city street. It didn't really come out a cyberpunk city street. It just kind of came out, I don't know, somewhere in like Toledo. Um, so if I, by running the tracking shot, uh, we ended up with a, with a very short generation sort of running in slow motion as well. Taking it out for another spin, it also repeated. So I don't think that the model can do tracking shots uh, just quite yet. I think it's more think of it as something for static shots. That said, I do think that there are some really interesting use cases for it, if, as long as you think about it as the limitations actually being its strengths. Uh, for example, Cocktail Peanut puts together this 24 second shot, you know, kind of in an illustrated style, but, you know, also feels like a moving photograph. Now, I will note that the model isn't the greatest at, you know, stylistic consistency. Some of the cars here, like they, they kind of lean into photorealistic, but still, I mean, I think if you look at this, there's a lot you could probably think of in terms of different use cases for something like this. Peanut also gives us a 21 second shot of a lo-fi gal eternally studying and chilling, listening to her lo-fi beats. I presume it's an MF Doom track. Uh, no, I think this is great. And I think this is definitely something that you can utilize to generate, you know, a much longer version if you wanted to, especially if you're doing kind of that atmospheric thing, uh, you know, lo-fi YouTube channel, for example. I mean, this is a perfect use case. And obviously you don't have to do super long videos with frame pack as well. You know, you can generate your standard, you know, five to eight second videos if you want to. What's really interesting to me is that frame pack appears, you know, just shortly after TTT, which was a minute long uh, generator that dropped, uh, I wanna say two weeks ago, that was the one that had the Tom and Jerry examples. But what's interesting is that both projects took very different approaches to getting here. And I'm sure that these are not the only two. We likely will be seeing more variations on long generation videos coming up over the next few months. Obviously, code for frame pack is available. I'll leave a link uh, down below for the TTT paper, the Tom and Jerry one. It is pretty fascinating uh, once you kind of get past the Tom and Jerry-ness of it all, which I think a lot of people kind of got hung up on. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name's Tim.